Hello! Welcome to this Price a Job tutorial series on how to create a custom module in Price a Job. In this video, we'll discuss some handy tips and tricks to finish your custom module. In previous videos, we discussed how to build an advanced custom module. Now it's time to complete the training with some handy tips and tricks. To start with, we've set our quantity here for zero. So all of our materials are also dynamic and reflected as zero, but the materials are still showing in our estimate, and it would be good if we could hide these materials when the quantity is set to zero. So to do that, let's first enter edit mode, and then we'll select the material. This opens the material edit window, and here you'll see an option called hide empty. We can simply select that, and apply the changes. And now when we exit edit mode, we'll see that this material is hidden from our view when the quantity is set to zero. When we increase the quantity, the material reappears. Let's repeat this process for the rest of our materials. And to edit mode, select the material, hide empty, and apply. Next material, hide empty, and apply. Labor, hide empty, and apply. Next material, hide empty, and apply. And finally, the labor for decorating, hide empty, and apply. Now of course, while we're in edit mode, even when the quantity is set to zero, we'll still be able to see all of our materials in labor. That's because while we're in edit mode, everything is visible to us for editing. However, once we exit edit mode, all of our materials will be hidden when empty. We can increase the quantity to see all of our materials and labor return. Next, we'll notice that when we adjust the width or the length of our shed, the title of our material does not change. Although the width is now 2000 millimeters, the garden shed material is still listed as 1800 millimeters. So let's make this material title dynamic. To do this, we'll enter edit mode and select the material. Now we'll go into the material title and we will replace 1800 with double curly brackets, opening and closing, dollar sign, width times 1000. And for 3600, we'll add a space there and replace the 3600 with double curly brackets and contained within, dollar sign, length times 1000. And apply our changes. And we see some errors here for NAN, not a number. And we know how to deal with that. We'll just simply go into our variable list. And we see that the variables of width and length are not contained within this current stage. So we'll simply go into our main stage and copy the width variable. And that copies to our current stage. And then we will copy the length variable. And that also copies to the current stage. And now when we check our title, it should now be fully dynamic. Our shed is set at 2 meters wide by 3.6, and that shows as 2,000 millimeters by 3,600 millimeters. If we change the length to 6 meters length, this is also updated in the Garden Shed Materials title. Now, the next item of housekeeping that we should tend to is within our stages. We'll note that the quantity of sheds is listed here. However, the one each is not dynamic. As we change the quantity of sheds here in the main stage, the shed stage still indicates only a one quantity shed. So to fix this, what we'll do is enter edit mode and go to our shed stage and click the stage options and edit stage. Under the options, we see a stage amount tab, which we will select. And we see that the amount is set as a fixed number one, which is the reason why it's not dynamic. So we will change this to dollar sign QTY. And for units, we will leave that as each. And for rounding, we'll go ahead and set this to round to zero decimal points. And then save. And now, as we adjust the quantity component, we see that our shed stage reflects the accurate quantity here. Let's do the same thing for decorating. We will edit the stage and go to stage amount. But rather than quantity, it seems as though the actual surface area to be decorated would be more appropriate. So our formula for this will be dollar sign 
width times two plus dollar sign length times two. And we'll put this in brackets because this is the perimeter of our shed. And we will multiply this by 2.5 meters, which is the height of the shed. We'll multiply that by quantity. For units, we'll change the units from each to square meters. And we will set our rounding to one decimal place. And save. And now we can see the area of our shed currently is 160 meters. And as we change our quantity, the area of coverage for decorating is also dynamic. Now the next item we might like to adjust is when we set our quantity to zero, all of our materials are hidden, but the descriptions still remain. So let's find out how to hide these descriptions when the quantity is set to zero. First, we'll enter our edit mode and select one of our descriptions. In the edit pane, we see a tab called visibility. Here we can set this to show, hide, or condition. So let's set this to conditional. And for the condition, we will specify when quantity is more than zero. And save. And now when we exit edit mode, if we reduce our quantity to zero, this description title disappears. So let's go back into edit mode, select this one go back to visibility, copy this formula, and let's copy that same formula to the rest of our descriptions. So we'll set this as conditional, paste formula, and save. And the next description, visibility, conditional, paste formula, save. The next description, visibility, conditional, paste formula and save next description visibility conditional paste formula and save and we'll do the same thing for decorating select this description conditional visibility quantity more than zero and save visibility conditional paste formula and save and finally visibility conditional paste formula and save now when we exit our edit mode when we adjust our quantity to zero all of our descriptions disappear when we add any quantity all of our descriptions and materials and labor reappear again but we see also a few non-dynamic elements within these descriptions still for instance, the garden shed still reads 1800 by 36 millimeters, even though we have changed the width and length. So to fix that, let's enter our edit mode again, and we'll select this garden shed description title. We'll select this 1800 and replace that with double curly brackets, and we'll set a variable of dollar sign width. And we'll do the same thing here for the 3600, double curly brackets, and we'll replace 3600 with dollar sign length and save that change and our formula needs a bit of tweaking because it now thinks that this is 2.6 millimeters which would be a very tiny shed so we'll go ahead and adjust that to either we could multiply this by 1000 or we could just change our millimeters to meters so we'll go ahead and save and now this is a two by six meter shed and if we change our settings here to 1.8, we can see the size of the shed is properly reflected. Now let's notice the rest of our descriptions. Our paving slabs requires eight square meters of paving slabs, but this is non-dynamic. As we change our quantity, the description of the amount of paving slabs does not change. So we'll go back into edit mode and select our paving slabs and rather than eight meters squared, we'll change this amount to double curly brackets, dollar sign area multiplied by dollar sign quantity and save. And now as we adjust the quantity of sheds, our paving slabs are dynamic 
as well as the area of our shed also reflects the number of paving slabs that we'll require. Next, let's take a look at the garden shed allowance. As we adjust the cost of our garden shed, our garden shed allowance has not changed. So let's enter edit mode and select our garden shed allowance. And we'll replace the number 1000 with double curly brackets, dollar sign price multiplied by dollar sign area. And save our change. And now as we adjust our pricing slider, we can see that our garden shed allowance is also dynamic. Now the next item within the descriptions is our decorating under wood stain. As we change our wood stain selection, the description is not responding. So let's enter our edit mode and go down to the decorating description of the saddle and wood stain. And for this, we will replace the saddle and wood stain with double curly brackets. And now we require a variable for our wood stain. So let's go to the variables table here. And we see here is the wood stain variable, but what we're actually seeking is the wood stain title, which is this one here, dollar sign wood stain underscore title. So we'll simply copy that to our clipboard and paste that here as a variable and save the change. And something happens here, the material actually disappears. And if we exit our edit mode, we see that we have a blank. And there is a reason for this, is that most often formulas are a number. But in this case, the wood stain title is a text word. So for that, we must surround the text with a single quote. And save. And now our decorating material is fully responsive. As we change the wood stain that we apply, the description updates automatically. Now you might notice that the quantity of wood stain is not dynamic. Here we require 8.4 tubs, but the description still only reads two tubs of wood stain. So the easy solution around that is to simply remove the quantity. And then when we save, we can indicate that we are just supplying the wood stain. However, since this is an advanced module, let's show you the right way to do it. So let's click on the description And here we shall enter the formula, double curly bracket, math dot round 10, bracket 2.5 multiplied by bracket dollar sign width times two plus dollar sign length times two end bracket multiplied by quantity divided by four comma minus two. And what this formula means is math round 10 minus two We'll take this formula and round it to two decimal places. 2.5 is the height of our shed, the width and the length times two is the perimeter, and the quantity is the number of sheds. Divided by four is the coverage per tub of wood stain. Here we'll indicate that this is in liters of wood stain title. Let's save it and see if it works. The description now reads that we require 21 liters of outdoor varnish. Let's check our quantities and see it is dynamic with our quantity. And we'll compare this with our materials down below rather than each. Let's set this for liters. We require 14 liters of outdoor varnish. That matches. And let's try a different material. We'll choose a one liter tub. That shouldn't change the number of liters that we require. This is still the same. Now let's exit the edit mode just to see how it looks. That's quite nice. One small change I'd like to make here to the description is under the garden shed header. I would like to indicate the quantity of sheds required. We'll just simply put in a description here called quantity with double curly brackets QTY and save. And now as we adjust our quantity, we can see here in the garden shed description, the quantity of sheds required. And I think just for formatting, I might like to see a comma separator here for that. So it looks a little bit better. Separate the meters. 
with quantity. Save, exit edit mode, garden shed two by 3.6 meters, quantity three. That looks good. Once we're happy with all the changes we've made, we can go down to create template and save this as a advanced template. And that pretty much covers some handy tips and tricks to finish your custom module and completes the custom module training series, for now anyways. We look forward to bringing you many more tutorial videos covering various other functions of Pricerjob. Please feel free to get in touch with any questions, requests, or comments. Thank you for using Pricerjob.